Uh, my Lords, um, being still relatively uh, new in your Lordship's house, um, it seems impertinent to me to uh, start by welcoming the noble, noble Lord, Lord Hackey, uh, to his place, but I do so heartily. Uh, I add only that uh, from the pictures hanging in the corridors, uh, there are many precedents that um, men used to wear hats uh, in the chamber as well, so perhaps we should make it a, a universal uh, ambition to restore it for, for everybody. Um, obviously, um, I'm speaking uh, in the company of many distinguished lawyers, and not being myself a lawyer, uh, distinguished or otherwise at all, um, it's likely that I'm going to go trampling off the narrow path that has been trodden uh, so far. And I, and I do intend to do that, because I propose to use my few minutes uh, to talk about airports, about which I do know uh, something uh, and my complaint is, as uh, noble lords will hear, that the bill, not that the bill goes too far, but that it is far too narrow. So let me start by reminding noble lords that when the Roskill Commission reported in 1971, recommending the sighting of London's third airport at Cublington in Oxfordshire, uh, it took the government of the day 30 months in total to reject the recommendation adopt another plan altogether and legislate for that other plan through the Maplin Development Act. By contrast, the Airports Commission, chaired by Sir Howard Davis, reported in June 2015 recommending a third runway at Heathrow. It took the government three years until June 2018 to prepare and bring forward the national policy statement for designation by Parliament. Now, part of the reason for that delay uh, is no doubt because the government or its civil servants was paying co close attention to the book mentioned by the noble baroness, Lady Whitaker, called The Judge Over Your Shoulder, uh, much mistitled as a guide to better decision-making. Um, so June 2018, and a Parliament designates uh, the National Policy Statement. Uh, that does not give it the force of statute, but it gives it a statutory force. Uh, nonetheless, campa campaign groups then got together uh, and brought judicial review proceedings, uh, which were rolled up and heard by the High Court. Uh, by my recollection, there were 17 points of objection made to the government's, the process followed by the government. All of them were dismissed by the High Court. Uh, nothing daunted, the campaigners headed off to the Court of Appeal. All 17 points were considered again. Of course, the objectors had only to win one point in order to gain their objective, and they did. The Court of Appeal stubbed its toe on the question of what the definition of the word policy was in the phrase government policy. Uh, the NPS was then suspended by the Court of Appeal until the government redid its homework. Now, to cut to the chase, that didn't actually happen. Instead, the case proceeded to the Supreme Court, which in December 2020, five and a half years after the Airports Commission had submitted its recommendation, reversed the Court of Appeal decision and effectively, uh, as I understand it, uh, rejected all the objections that had been made. And that merely brought the government and Heathrow Airport to the point where they could then start to submit a, a, a development consent order for consideration by uh, inspectors to be appointed. Now, of course, my Lord, the third runway is now moot in any event because of the pandemic, just as Macklin fell before a change of government and the massive hike in oil prices that occurred um, uh, in the early 1970s. So neither of those is a live case, particularly at the moment. And I have to tell noble lords that I am not here to argue Heathrow's case. Far from it. I have spent 20 years campaigning against the expansion of Heathrow. My concern is broader than that. My concern is that the third runway was to be, and if it goes ahead, is to be financed by private capital. The delay 
The uncertainty added by this lengthy, constantly shifting response in judicial review has a real cost on the cost of capital, which we all have to pay. And it has a chilling effect on foreign investment in UK infrastructure. This is not the vindication of citizens' rights spoken of by certain lords. This is the continuation of politics in the judicial forum. Different noble lords will react differently to this. Some will see it as the law doing its job. I don't. I see it as a distortion of the balance of our constitution compared to 1971. And I put it down as a challenge to those who have suggested so far in this debate that everything is more or less beyond improvement in the judicial review garden. 